Hi everybody, like uh, Dr. Khan mentioned, uh, I'm uh, Nick Meyer, VP of Business Development with More Nuco. We're a little bit different heights. <laughs> um, I won't talk too much. I'm uh, mostly here just to not spill anything on my shirt and shake some hands. Dr. Taggart is going to run down the technology, but real quick, we wanted to just say thank you to the cons for hosting this event. Um, this is wonderful for bringing this all together. Um, just a, a real fast history. The, the company that we're presenting the technology on behalf of uh, was founded by uh, two professors at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. The, the work, the Uncle Bot test, is probably the crown jewel for their work. Uh, Dr. D. James and Dr. Dorothy Murray, who um, obviously were not able to join us tonight, uh, they're still still doing research down in West Lafayette with our company and, and overseeing the events uh, that transpire to, to people like Dave and I coming out to present on their amazing technology. But Dr. D. James Murray was the uh, senior founding director of the Purdue University Cancer uh, Research Center. So. Probably one of the top uh, top minds still actively pursuing new and in innovative ways to uh, to manage cancer. So, without further ado, I'll uh, turn it over to Dave, and he can not do that. So. Uh, hello, everyone, uh, and I would like to reiterate uh, what Nick said and. Uh, uh, thank Metacore for the very generous um, invitation to come and speak to you all today about the clinical applications of the ENOX2 serum cancer marker. Uh, now, I am, I'm a PhD. I'm a biochemist by training. Um, I tend to go a little bit deep into some of the laboratory techniques and some of the biochemistry behind the test. Um, so if you don't understand anything, please feel free to, to raise your hand or speak up during the talk and I'm happy to take questions during the talk so that we can have more of a conversation rather than a lecture talk. That's, that's two slides. That's all going forward. Uh, there we go. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about the Enox2 serum cancer marker, which was, uh, as Nick said, it was discovered, co-discovered, by Jim and Dorothy Murray, who were professors at Purdue University. And indeed, the Murrays discovered the entire family of the ENOX2 proteins. But today, we're going to be talking specifically about ENOX2. Now, ENOX2 is an amazingly interesting protein in that it is produced after malignant transformation of cells due to the differential splicing of the messenger RNA that encodes this protein. So this protein, uh, in contrast to other cancer markers is, is produced exclusively after malignant transformation of cancer cells? Yes, that, is that a question or are you talking to the... <laughs> okay. uh, is, is expressed exclusively after malignant transformation of cancer cells rather than many other protein markers for cancer that are simply normal physiological proteins that are overexpressed when cancer is present. Um, additionally, ENOX2 is elevated very early during disease progression. I'm going to show you some of that evidence today. As opposed to many other cancer markers that are exclusively elevated um, during later stages of cancer progression. Also, remember I touched on the fact that um, ENOX2 was produced as a result of differential splicing of a messenger RNA. Well, it turns out that there are actually tissue-specific isoforms of ENOX2 that are produced by cancers from different tissues of origin. And so not only is ENOX2 a marker of cancer presence, but it can also identify a tissue of origin. Uh, so currently, ENOX2 detection is available as a laboratory developed test called the Oncoblot test. Um, now, the Oncoblot test uses a process called two-dimensional gel electrophoresis to separate proteins in blood serum, first by their isoelectric point, and second by their molecular weight. And then, if any ENOX2 proteins are present, they will be detected by an ENOX2 specific antibody. Now, in the final step of the Oncoblot analysis, is then if any ENOX2 proteins are detected, that pattern of ENOX2 protein expression will then be compared to a database, which currently represents over 1,500 serum samples from clinically confirmed cancer patients. And by doing this kind of comparison, not only can cancer be detected, but also a tissue of origin can be assigned. And I know that's a little bit to take in, but I'll walk through each step of this process uh, individually. So for the outline for the talk, initially I'm going to be talking about the methods of protein separation by using two-dimensional gel electrophoresis, because although this is a very common 
uh, methodology for proteomics experts. Um, it is not often used clinically, so I'll walk through that process. Uh, second, I'm going to be showing you evidence of Enox2 protein detection within the serum of clinically confirmed cancer patients, primarily late stage cancer patients, and then we're going to start taking that bit by bit earlier and earlier in the process, and I'm going to show you evidence of Enox2 detection very early during cancer progression. Uh, finally, we're, we're going to touch upon some of the published and at least one unpublished um, study of longitudinal uh, in which uh, serum samples from individuals who later developed cancer were investigated longitudinally and res retrospectively to show you some of the evidence that Enox2 is produced um, even before the onset of clinical symptoms in many cases. And then finally, I'll be answering some of the very common clinical questions that we often get from clinicians. Uh, prior to using the Oncoblot test. So for two-dimensional gel electrophoresis, these are the three major steps for the, Oncoblot, for the Oncoblot test. First, proteins are separated by using isoelectric focusing. Every protein has an isoelectric point, and isoelectric point is basically shorthand for the ratio of positively and negatively charged amino acids particularly the amino acid side chains, within each protein. Second, after proteins are separated by isoelectric focusing, they are then separated in a second dimension by molecular weight, by using um, SDS page or acrylamide gel electrophoresis. Once proteins are separated by both isoelectric focusing and then by molecular weight, um, then we use an immunoblot approach to detect any Enox2 proteins, if present, by using an Enox2 specific antibody. So here I'm showing you two uh, gels that were in which proteins were separated initially by isoelectric focusing. So in the first dimension along the top, this represents how proteins are separated from a pH of 10 to a pH of 3. So all of the proteins in blood serum were separated along a linear gradient from an isoelectric point of 10 to 3. In the second dimension, the proteins were separated by molecular weight by using, um, by using SDS page. And then any Enox2 proteins at present were detected with an Enox2 specific antibody. So here on the left hand side, this is an, a, an example of sera that was run from a non-cancer patient. And you'll notice that there are two very strong indications of two proteins that are being detected. These proteins are actually serotransferrin and alpha fetuin, two proteins that are inherently in blood serum. And we use these as both loading controls and for controls for proper um, isoelectric focusing and molecular weight because, the iso because both the isoelectric point and the molecular weight of these two proteins are known. On the right hand side, I'm showing you a blot of pooled uh, serum from individuals who are diagnosed with uh, non-small cell lung cancer. And you'll notice there is yet a third protein detected right here. This is the detection of an Enox2 protein. Um, and so then for this blot, the isoelectric point and molecular weight of this protein could then be determined and compared to a database uh, consisting of serum samples from cancer patients. And by doing this kind of comparison, uh, de novo, we can identify this as serum from individuals that were diagnosed that were um, uh, diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer. Now. The difference between some of these Enox2 isoforms can be subtle, but they can still be differentiated. For instance, these are two additional blots in which I'm showing you the serum samples from uh, ind individuals that were diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer versus small cell lung cancer. Now, these two Enox2 isoforms have a very similar molecular weight, right? They have a very similar size. However, they can be differentiated based upon the isoelectric point. Um, the isoelectric point of individuals diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer tend to be approximately uh, of a pH of approximately 5.1 versus individuals with diagnosed with small cell lung cancer which have a more acidic iso, um, isoform that is being produced with an isoelectric point of approximately 4.3. So initially to establish a database uh, the serum samples of over uh, approximately 804 subjects with clinically diagnosed cancer, primarily late stage cancer patients, were analyzed by using the Oncoblot test. And after this analysis, approximately 0.3% of these primarily late stage cancer patients were negative for Enox2. Um, 
And after a database was established, including the ranges of both the molecular weights and isoelectric points that are commonly found um, within, the, in, within the serum of individuals that were clinically diagnosed with cancer, um, approximately 3.3% of these serum samples would have been misdiagnosed as to the tissue of origin uh, solely based upon non-blood tests. And here's the reason for that. So here I'm showing you a table of ranges of the ENOX2 proteins that are present within the serum samples of clinically diagnosed cancer patients. For instance, uh, the ENOX2 isoforms that are commonly found within the serum of breast cancer patients have a molecular weight between 64 and 69 kilodaltons and an isoelectric point between 4.2 and 4.9. Uh, now interestingly, there are some tissue tissues of origin uh, that produce only a single ENOX2 isoform, whereas there are some tissues of origin that actually produce two ENOX2 isoforms simultaneously, such as ovarian cancer. And there are yet other tissues of origin that will produce up to three ENOX2 isoforms simultaneously, such as colorectal cancer. So primarily where this 3.3% misidentification rate would have come from is that um, for certain serum samples from known, uh, from patients with clinically diagnosed, say, colorectal cancer, um, for some of these patients, only one of, uh, only one of three of these NOx2 proteins were detected. Supposedly, um, or uh, uh, likely because the other two NOx2 isoforms may have been below the limit of detection at that time, that the serum sample was drawn. Now notice that many of the end numbers, this is the total number of uh, serum samples that we've analyzed for particular tissues of origin. Uh, these are far greater than the initial 804 subjects. We are constantly updating our database, we are constantly acquiring new serum samples from individuals that are diagnosed with cancer. And so this is, this is one of our more recent tables of the total number of, of different serum samples that we have acquired from individuals with uh, these, uh, from individuals with cancers from these different tissues of origin that have been analyzed. So I've just shown you evidence that um, ENOX2 isoforms are useful for identification of a tissue of origin uh, for late stage cancer patients. But what about very early stages of cancer? To start answering that question, we've analyzed uh, 25 serum samples from individuals diagnosed with stage zero cancers and 25 serum samples from individuals diagnosed with stage one serum samples from a number of different tissues of origin. Now upon analysis of all of these samples, ENOX2 proteins were found in all 50 of these samples and all 50 of these samples were correctly identified as to the tissue of origin. Now this end value, only 50 serum samples, is significantly lower than the database that we have for uh, late stage cancer patients. However, even with this sample size of 50, we still have a confidence interval of 90% with a range of 89 to 100%. So in addition to uh, showing you information for not just uh, detection of ENOX2 within the serum of late stage cancer patients or early stage cancer patients. Uh, the next question is, can ENOX2 also be used as a marker of recurrence? So here are five blots. Uh, these were all from individuals who were either uh, non-cancer patients or individuals that were diagnosed with either stage 1 or stage 4. Uh, notice that the ENOX2 isoforms between stage 1 and stage 4 are very similar. Uh, the molecular weight and isoelectric point of the ENOX2 proteins, it doesn't change based on stage. It is not useful for staging. It is only useful for identification of the tissue board. Um, now compare these blots with the blots on the far right hand side. This blot represents a cancer survivor. This is somebody who is in complete remission. And notice that the ENOX2 isoform specific to breast cancer is absent. However, in the uh, far right hand blot, this represents an individual who, is, who currently underwent a relapse uh, when the serum sample was drawn. It was uh, diagnosed with stage four cancer after relapse. And again, the same ENOX2 isoform that's indicative of breast cancer was again present within the sample. 